Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Translating Europe Forum. We're delighted to see all of you here in Brussels, and thanks to everyone for also joining online. My name is Aminda Lee. I'm a journalist. I'm also a translator specializing in audiovisual translation, and I'm also a moderator, which is why I'm standing on stage right now. I'm honored to be returning to TEF as a co-host for this year's edition. And my name is Anya Sitharam. I'm a former BBC World News presenter, now documentary maker and moderator, and I'm pleased to be Aminda's co-pilot. Um, we are really delighted that you could join us here, those of you here in person and those of you watching online, for this ninth edition of this showcase event organised by the European Commission's Directorate General for Translation. This event is being interpreted from English and French into English, French, Italian, German, Spanish and Polish. You can see in the room uh, the numbers of the translations are on the screens either side. And for those of you watching remotely, you can choose your preferred language at the right bottom corner of the video screen. And of course, everyone should be able to see the international sign language interpretation, which is over there. So if you need to see it, you should need to move to that side of the room. After an enforced absence of two years, and we all know why, uh, we are delighted to welcome back an in-person audience here in Brussels, as well as those of you tuning in online. And we're delighted to say that almost 3,000 people have registered to attend this year's Translating Europe Forum, or TEF, as it's known amongst uh, those people who come often. And there will be almost 500 of you. In fact, the room is pretty packed today here in the Charlemagne in Brussels. As usual, TEF brings people together from all strands of the translation profession, from language service providers or LSPs to academia, as well as freelancers, students and trainees. When, indeed, because this year the largest group of registered participants is freelance translators. Nearly a thousand have signed up for the event. And uh, then come students from universities or research centres with nearly 700 people registered. And without forgetting the 157 students from the Network of European Masters in Translation, that's the EM EMT programmes. In fact, 40% of this year's audience is aged under 35. Not us. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're not the we audience, bring though. experience. Yes. <laughs> and also, an interesting fact I learned a bit earlier is that there are people from 100 countries registered to watch this. So, you know, that's not just Europe, that's all over the world. So, so welcome to you all. And, of course, there are also plenty of representatives from EU institutions, national administrations, international organisations, translators' associations and translation tool providers. We are all gathered to discuss this year's TEF theme, Access Granted, Going Beyond Translating Text. Here we're talking about accessing information of whatever kind that is. Um, and this encourages, of course, mutual understanding between different cultures, and that's really what it's all about. Indeed, translation can be described as one of the invisible powers behind globalization and economic recovery and growth. And many of you here today, either in the room or watching online, are holders of that invisible power. Now, as you've seen from the programme, it's a very broad subject, spanning from accessibility in all its forms to issues such as technology and translation in a crisis. Along the way, we'll also be considering the power of words, hearing industry insights, exploring university curricula, and discussing the all-important factor of quality. And there's also time for some of the young professionals to take over the floor. So now you've got to concentrate because we're going to do the housekeeping and this is really how to make the most of this conference. So check that your mobiles are on silent, please, but don't put them away. You need them handy because we're going to be using them for various things. Uh, the Wi-Fi code is on the back of your pass and as it's a hybrid event, 
Um, it's important you create a profile on the 2022 TEF B2 Match platform so you can see the agenda, speakers and other participants, and you can even schedule one-to-one -one meetings with them. And you can also download the B2 Match app onto your phones. This year's TEF has special sessions being held entirely online before the plenary session, starting in the morning, and afterwards in the evening. These purely online activities are listed in the TEF agenda. Of course, participants here can also take part and follow the online activities as well, but please book your place because they're already packed out. There's already three that have been completely sold out. To watch the live streaming uh, online via the platform, all you have to do is log on, then click on the streams option on the main menu on the top of the screen. We're going to be using Slido, as Anna, uh, we've mentioned, for collecting your questions, and it's conveniently integrated into the Beta Match platform. So those of you online, you have everything all in one place. The stream video opens with the Slido and also a chat. Please don't post questions in the chat. Uh, please use that Slido for that, uh, because that means you will also be able to vote on other people's questions. And you in the room here, you can also send your questions in on Slido. And you can see on the screen the details to be connecting. So let's get stuck right in. We're going to have a little test now to make sure Slido is working and that you're all across it. Um, so you may have noticed that there is a general strike in Belgium today. So if <laughs> you could start the first poll, please. So how was your journey here? Was it really smooth? <laughs> Two, were there some delays but nothing serious? Three, it's been quite stressful. Uh, four, a total nightmare. <laughs> Five, since I'm watching online, I have no problems at all. So let's, uh, let's uh, have a look at that. We'll leave that running for a little bit so you can uh, start your answering your polls. We can actually already start seeing people have already uh, started putting in. The people who are online are obviously have the easiest journey here today. Um, and we'll leave that running for a few moments. While you're online and you have your mobile phones, don't forget you can tweet as well. Um, please use the hashtag 2022TEF. Right, and one more housekeeping note, a reminder to please be back in the room on time after each break, because uh, we need to be back for our online audience who want it to be on time, and so you can listen out for bells ringing at the five minute and two minute mark. So keep your ears out. Now, uh, we've given you a bit of time to react. We've already had 362 people answering our poll. Thank you very much. Uh, let's close the poll now. And can we see the results on the screen, please? Well, as uh, many of you are already watching uh, online, you don't seem to have had much trouble at all. Um, but... Uh, we're just, it's coming. It's, well, I was just watching that beforehand, so I, I'm ahead of the curve, you see. So I might be totally wrong. <laughs> but I did notice that there were 2% uh, who thought it was a total nightmare. So, you know, we uh, want my to heart goes out to you. Oh, there we there are. We are. Okay. Oh, 1% are total nightmare. 3% it's been quite stressful. So that's really good. And 22% really smooth. Really wow. smooth. Okay. <laughs> we, we didn't have a great journey in, actually, did we? <laughs> no, that's no, not we, brilliant, we, but uh, not really smooth. So that's certainly not the case. Okay, uh, well, thank you for that. Now we've gone through all the practical proceedings and everything we need to know. Uh, let's start the real proceedings. And we're going to have a welcome address, and I'd like to invite on stage the European Commissioner for Budget Admi and Administration, Johannes Hahn. Welcome, Commissioner. We will now hand the floor over to you. Thank you, Aminda. Thank you, Anja. Thank you to all of you who made it uh, today to, to Brussels. And indeed, it was not our concept to coincide with a general strike. But uh, otherwise, there are not many opportunities where there are no strikes in Brussels. So that's why we had to decide on a date. And uh, thank you for all of you who could uh, make it. 
Once again, it was said, I think it's the first time after two or three years that we can be at least uh, partly together in person and therefore a particular warm welcome to our Translating Europe uh, forum here in Brussels and out there in the virtual world. Many of you uh, translate European values into reality and this is even more important now than ever. When Putin's war against Ukraine started, translators and I have to say also interpreters and I would like also to welcome those who feel themselves more um, interpreters and less translators but I understand many of you are doing the same but there is also a differentiation and uh, this is also expressed in our administrative structures. We have two DGs, the one for the interpreters, the one for the translators but I understand there is nevertheless a good and excellent cooperation as it should be. Uh, but uh, I wanted, I, I, I'm, I'm saying this and I'm stressing this because uh, many of you have been really crucial in, in helping Ukrainian refugees. Translation enables solidarity and connects people. Umberto Eco once said, uh, the language of Europe is uh, translation. I am particularly happy to see that the first keynote speaker is uh, Tatiana Struck from Ukraine, who will uh, talk about the role of translators in the global community. Translating is more than a text work. It helps people to understand each other in a deeper sense. Translation ensures that information is not just available, but also accessible. We need to have a clear understanding of what accessibility truly means. The fact that information is available on the internet or in a printed form does not mean that everyone can access and use it. It's written in a language you don't understand, you cannot access it. You have difficulties with eyesight or with uh, reading text, you cannot access it. It's too long, too complex or full of technical jargon, it's not fully accessible. When our European values and laws require that everyone should be able to access and use vital public information. This obviously goes beyond making texts available. In this regard, we have uh, made real progress over the last few years and we are committed to moving forward. There are just two examples to illustrate the different challenges we are tackling together. First, on the one hand, we need to ensure that all products and services in the single market are easy to use for all, including people with uh, disabilities and elderly people. This is guaranteed by the European Accessibility Act and the Web Accessibility Directive, aiming to make public sector websites and mobile applications more accessible. This has a huge impact on our daily work as the use of video has exploded and the Commission is increasingly active with videos and visuals in social media and on the web to reach out to people who prefer this medium to reading text. Second, on the other hand, we need to communicate in a more accessible way. One example is the Clear Writing for Europe initiative, which helps us in the Commission to write clear and concise documents that readers can easily understand, but I have to admit, there is work in progress. Uh, and those who are dealing with it know about what I'm speaking. Um, but I have to say, last year's winner, and we're always making some competition as a kind of motivation, uh, and therefore we have a clear writing contest, and the winner was a striking example. The new strategy on the rights of uh, the child was published along with a child-friendly version and a short version. Many of these uh, topics will be discussed during this forum and I really encourage your active input and suggestions. The hybrid format of this year's forum also matches the theme accessibility. This includes different types of translation and language technologies which enable access to information, goods and services such as speech to text and automatic speech recognition. It's essential, especially in times of crisis, that uh, people can access the information that is uh, important to them. We learned during this uh, 
COVID pandemic when translation and language technologies played a crucial role. When Russia started the war in Ukraine, the demand for translation expanded again to cover the additional need for information in Ukrainian and Russian. Language tools and technologies such as uh, speech, speech recognition were very useful in providing much needed help and support to the people who had to flee their homes and country, often under dramatic circumstances. In time, times when professional translators or interpreters were not available, language technologies helped to overcome linguistic barriers. Automatic translation may not be perfect, but it can make a vital difference in crisis. To achieve better results, it's useful, of course, to combine the wisdom of human translators with the speed of language technologies. Our translators work with a range of cutting-edge tools faster without making compromises on quality. A good example is the website Solidarity with Ukraine, available not only in all 24 official EU languages, but also in Ukrainian and Russian. But automatic translation alone cannot reach people. Machines cannot speak to the heart. People can. Machines cannot express solidarity. Human beings can. Machines cannot convey a feeling. Translators, interpreters can. Therefore, we cannot do without our language professionals. Europe needs professionals like you who understand nuances, tone, and emotion, and who can speak to the heart. As well as thanking our established language professionals who make such a valuable contribution, I would also like to say a few words uh, to our younger participants preparing to join this uh, distinguished profession. 2022 is uh, the European Year of Youth. It's your year, and uh, I hope you will use this forum to network and spark new ideas to improve translations. Because improving translations and thus accessibility means also improving Europe. The fact that the very first regulation of the European communities of uh, 1958 was on the use of languages speaks for itself and highlights the importance of languages for a European project. I have to say, sometimes we hear critics that we um, we uh, afford the luxury of 24 uh, official languages. But it's one of our core principles. It's one of our core principles to enable all our citizens to communicate with us in their language, not to create any barriers because of lack of language skills. It's a little bit time-consuming, it's costly, but it's a expression of our principles, and we will not depart from these core European principles. And therefore, we need you. So you are one of the pillars of um, the European project, of the European Union. Otherwise, we could not um, apply these principles, these uh, ideas, this philosophy. So therefore, I am grateful for your engagement, and I hope... Uh, you will join the Commission in its efforts to promote the language and translation profession and the richness, again, the richness of uh, multilinguism, something which, is, which marks uh, Europe uh, in particular. So your work matters for people, for our citizens, for businesses, and for Europe. But having said all this, I have to excuse myself for leaving you, because this is not only a day of strike, uh, it's also a week of budget negotiations. Uh, sometimes I would enjoy if there would also be a kind of strike, uh, but there is not, not a strike. We have to negotiate, we have to um, finish these negotiations because we have a very strict uh, uh, time straight jacket, if I may say so, and therefore um, I have to leave you, unfortunately, but I wish you all the best again 
uh, not only listening uh, to the speeches, to the panel discussions, but using indeed uh, at least those who are here in person the opportunity to network, uh, to get inspirations, and uh, once again to return back, ho hopefully without um, um, uh, problems related to strikes or other things, and uh, to be in a way beefed up with a lot of uh, good ideas and inspirations. Thank you very much and all the best.